Hi, my name is Will, and welcome to the drum room sessions for this week. Uh, today we have a guy called Dean from a solar project called Built. How are you today? Good, thanks. Paul. Good. Good to see you. How long has this project been going on? We were, we were talking about it just before we started the cameras, and yeah. you, you said it, it's been going on for a while. Has been going for a while. It's been going since, well, as an entity, it's been going since around 2011. Um, it actually has its roots going way back to 1998 when I started recording at home. Right. Um, just on home studios and things and and uh and doing everything myself because i just felt like uh it'll be fun to try because <laughs> i didn't know if i could do it or not and i thought well you know i'm a frustrated drummer that's that's really that was my first love with music was i wanted to be a drummer sure and um Who so I, yeah exactly exactly but then i discovered the guitar and obviously having that understanding of how drums work then okay, you know, if I if I can get a bass and if I can get a, I've got a guitar, I've got an amp, uh, um, I'll find a drum program of some description. I don't really need a drum kit, and I've got something to record on. So I'll just hit record and see what happens. And that's kind of where the journey began. Okay. Um, and this is the third project, if you will, after um, Breathing Underwater was the first one. Um, this theory of this theory of static was the second one, which evolved into a band and then and now built. So. Okay. That's where I am now. So, so how would you describe your sound? What's what is built sound like to the, you know, the, the the average listener? How would you define it roughly? Kind of sits somewhere in that, I guess that progressive. I really hate labels, but I, it's somewhere in that progressive rock kind of area. Progressive rock sounds really uh, uh, quite egotistical. <laughs> you know, when you think of progressive rock, you think like twelve minute long songs and sax solos and all the rest of it. It's certainly not that progressive. But I do enjoy um, the odd time signatures. I do enjoy that um, stepping just slightly outside of that box of 4-4, four, four, whatever, and doing something that just catches the ear and makes you, you know, pricks your ears up and makes no. you go, what the hell's going on here? You know, Soundgarden were great at doing that. Sort kind of like stuff. Clever Rock. There's a new genre right there. I guess it would be, <laughs> yeah, I guess it would be called Clever Rock. Um, it's got, I was listening to it last night, actually, funnily enough, uh, with some friends and it was you know working in a vacuum is really really hard really hard um because you are in your own head when you're producing your own music in, your, in, a, in a bedroom um and it comes a time where you actually do need to share it with people because that's why you do it right yeah. and i was playing it to some friends last night and i was actually quite blown away by how it actually does have its commercial leanings. It does. It is very, very melodic. But at the time, it's. I do enjoy that it's. It's big and thick and noisy, and and that's you know, that's the sort of music I like. So. So um, you're releasing it on August the 18th. Is that correct? Which is. Yeah, 18, 8, 18. Was there any any reason for that for that? Just like the number eight. Okay. <laughs> oh, the Asians do. Asians love the number eight because yeah. it's, it's like infinity and. That's right. New beginnings or something like that. All right. So you you're going to release it. Uh, well, it's it'll be next Saturday now. But depending yeah. when this interview comes go, yeah. goes out, well, it may have been sort of last week or the week before. Yeah. Depending. How many tracks are on the Six. album? Six. Uh, it was going to be in a, a, you know a five track EP. Um, Built was sitting around doing nothing for about a good five or six years. When I say doing nothing, I was, you know, the old adage: life gets in the way. Um, I would find time every now and again to, on a weekend maybe, to throw down a couple of ideas um, on a, on, a, on the computer, and and those ideas kind of grew over the years um, to the point where I th I think I took stock at the start of or the end of 2015, and I had 35 odd song ideas or fully formed songs, and I thought, oh, this is, you know, some of this is actually quite good. Um, I could probably put together an album out of this if I pull finger and actually, you know, devote some time. You narrowed them down? Yeah, I narrowed them down. I got them down to, uh, firstly it was 15, then it was 12. By this point, another six months had gone past and I still hadn't really done anything. So I thought, well, I'm kidding myself if I'm thinking an album. So I thought, okay, five's good, five's a good number. One dropped off that and I wrote a new one. So that became five again. And then at the start of, um, of this year, the final piece of the puzzle was added, so the, yeah, it became six. And um, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's, 
I was a bit worried that some of those songs would be, you know, how a song sits around for ages and you kind of you lose interest or whatever. Mm. Um, they kind of evolved as they were being worked on. They kind of they just took on a new life and they became this their own thing, completely different to what they, you know, started out as. I've talked to quite a few musicians, like interviewing them, and um, a, a, a lot of people say that, that they'll write a song. Mm. Um, like particularly Ark of Ascent from uh, from a Hamilton said that they're, they're like a stoner rock band. Yeah. Um, they'll write a song and then they they won't play it live or and they won't record it sort of thing for about a year hmm. and they'll just jam it and then it will sort of organically become what it's supposed to be. You've got to be careful though that you don't overwork it. If you overwork o- it, overthink it, <coughs> overthink it, yeah. it, it, you lose perspective and then it's you know it's it becomes the most frustrating thing <laughs> in the world. So you're a multi-instrumentalist, I guess. I mean, there's probably more than just guitar. Or the, yeah. What, what other things have you added? Bass. Um, pluck away on the bass. Um, my shitty old squire, um, which has been with me since I started, actually. Um, and obviously sing myself. And um, I use a, a, a program called Addictive Drums, who are, um, who are awesome. Anyone recording at home, and you would know as well, is that trying to get a good drum sound recorded drum sound you need a good room like it's it's yeah, so important um and, and even even then there's like sample replacement and like they they quite often drop uh samples underneath right, yeah. underneath your drums to beef them up and, and it's the foundation right so mm. it needs to be really strong it needs to be big and and it needs to sound right and um and me with limited space um it was just you know it was just the the best option so and it, I, I was really pleased with how it came out. You know, I, I, I'm a frustrated drummer, as, as I've mentioned, and um, <laughs> I would dearly love to be able to play drums properly, like actually play them. Um, and, and down the line, maybe that, that might be, a, you know, an option one day. But for now, this is just a really, you know, a, a lot of that struggle, as I mentioned, you know, that five, six years or so where I was putting song ideas down, a lot of that time as well was spent trying to nail down that sound, you know. Right. Not not only of the drums, but actually nailed down what what does this band sound like? You know, I didn't want to repeat what I'd just done, and I wanted it to be a little bit more simple and a bit more direct. But I wanted it to be um, its its own thing. Have you added added anything behind the the guitar and the bass? Like, have you had any synths or no ambient? No, no there's no there's no other um, none of that rubbish no there's none of that rubbish there's not even any acoustic guitar i don't think okay it's just it really is just guitars drums um bass and and vocals um okay no samples no none of that sort of stuff apart from, it's, the addictive drums. Apart from addictive drums <laughs> but we're keeping that hush hush because people will listen to it and go that's a real drum kit and it kind of is you wrote the songs yourself and you've mm. recorded them yourself and i i guess you've mixed them up are you also going to master them yourself, or are you going to, going to send it off to someone else? No, that's all been done in um, in Nashville by a company called Sage Audio, who do really, really good work. Um, a guy named Steve over there, he was really, really helpful. Uh, at, as you'd know, and as musicians would know, that mastering phase is just like super important. If if it doesn't, if you don't get a good master. Um, it can ruin your songs, and um, they, they also say that you should probably not master your own stuff. Yeah, it's not a good idea. So, uh, and for me, I I look at mastering as it's a dark art. It's I don't know how they do it. I I really have never. I've tried mastering before, but it's it's just crazy what they can do with just left and right, you know. Um, and this guy is amazing. So, yeah, I sent him a, a sample. I didn't know really if if he was going to be the guy for the job and he sent back and it was yeah okay can you try this and he sent it back and it's just you know someone on the other side of the planet who really is invested in wanting to make sure that your little labor of love is actually going to turn out well and and, and, as oh, well. and obviously you were very happy with uh with what you yeah i was i was really pleased i mean you know the whole loudness wars thing is you know very real and i didn't re- i tried to not be part of that you, you, know. you didn't want to just uh, crush it and uh, com- compress it so it's just like one big rectangle no, not really <laughs> uh, no. i personally hate that as well certainly no no death no death magnetic for me thanks very much good man is it going to be released physically and uh have you got like a distribution deal of some kind through working someone? through um triple a records so they've distributed it digitally for me um at this stage it's 
it is just a digital release. Whereabouts are they based? Uh, they're based in Helensville, so a okay. um, little boutique label that do really good work. Um, and they've got a studio up there as well and uh, wonderful people and they've been really super helpful. Um, and yeah, the idea is that if it does, if it does do well, then we'll, we'll chuck it on a CD or, or mm. something. Okay, and you uh, you also mentioned b before we started recording that you uh, you shot a music video a little bit earlier in the year around February. Yeah, and you you didn't really want to talk about when you were going to release it because it hasn't quite mm. been completed yet. But yeah. you, do you would you like to first of all tell me about the video and then uh, uh, perhaps when it may be released? The idea is very very simple, very straightforward. It looks very very straightforward, but when we did it we ran through i think it was probably a good 25 to 30 takes of the song um, and it was all shot slightly differently each time and so when you imagine how many takes there are the amount of edits required for that is to achieve a certain effect is um is a pretty big job so i wouldn't want to be the the video editor on that um and i yeah there's no no solid details as yet as to when that's coming out but um, if you keep an eye on our Facebook page. How else can people get in touch with you or find, find your music? Are you on like Bandcamp or? Yep, Bandcamp, uh, builtnz.bandcamp is our page um, where you can, I think you can get the, uh, the EP for five bucks there. Um, iTunes is all good to go, Spotify, all major platforms all taken care of. Um, social media, we're on, um, we're on Twitter. Uh, at Built Music, I think it is, and Built Band on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. So probably if they go to your Facebook page, that they, they can get the majority of that information, yeah, those yeah, links that from that, from yeah. that base. Yeah. And it's a really big thing, you know. It's it's the the last time I released music was you know almost ten years ago, and it's uh, social media ten years ago was was hardly anything, yeah. um, and now it's just you know the the landscape in that amount of time since I last put anything out there is is changed dramatically so i'm learning i'm kind of learning as i go you know with facebook this whole, was a brand new thing back then it was it really was it was you know and and certainly musicians weren't using it back then for you know promoting no. themselves so it, was, it was just people shutting off their cats that's right pretty much <laughs> there's still plenty of that going on too that's true yeah at least it's been drowned out by other things that are perhaps a bit more yeah, like conspiracy theories yeah and uh, inspirational quotes <laughs> <laughs> I hate those yeah, All right, well, yeah. thanks thanks very much for coming to see me today, and uh, best of luck with the uh, release next week or Cheers, well. last week, depending when this comes out. <laughs> Excellent. And, uh, yeah, I, I look forward to hearing some uh, some more of your music. I, I heard one of your tracks, but but I haven't actually checked out the entire thing, so. Awesome. I'll, uh, I'll do that as soon as I can. All cool. right. Thanks, Will. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Cheers, man. Thanks, man.